The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. I've posted a chart of the E-mini S&P into um, Tiger TV today because we were making a beautiful 786 retracement in Gartley fashion, uh, and that was down at the uh, 1673 level, and we rallied about 10 points from that level, and it wouldn't take much you know, for this market to make a pretty good reversal uh, to the upside because it's still basically bullish. And that's pretty much, uh, you know, what it looks like. I believe that we've got some really strong things coming in uh, on October uh, October the 8th, which will be next Tuesday. And uh, if you recall, you know, the last time we had, uh, you know, our government in a quagmire, it was much worse uh, back in 2008. But what they did was they used, uh, you know, the typical fear tactics that they have, uh, you know, they'll say, well, the end of the world is coming, so we need $773 billion. That's what Paulson told us to to save the banks and the auto companies, which was the right thing to do in retrospect. But they, they'll use that the same way this time. There'll be some type of a fear uh, mechanism would be my guess. It'll probably push stocks down uh, into that October 8th level, and then we'll take a look at it. Now, we're getting very close to an anniversary date. Uh, in October of 2007 is when we made a uh, top in the market. So we want to be uh, indicative of, uh, of that thing happening again because markets repeat and we're five years, you know, past that level. Actually, my gosh, I can't believe that. Yeah, uh, seven, six, wow, we're seven years past that. It's hard to believe time goes so quickly. But we did hold really good support today uh, in the uh, E-mini S&P, which, uh, you know, it was very easy to see if you were looking at that particular thing. We've had tremendous moves, folks, as you, you know, those of you that follow the commodity markets uh, yesterday and then again today in the commodity markets. You know, we had uh, gold fall out of bed and then it get, get, came back and took it all back, uh, got almost all of its loss back. Uh, same thing with copper. I mean, it's just been a, a tremendous move in some of these things that have kept the markets uh, very, very active. We're going to cover some of those. I know it's... Uh, the commodity shows tomorrow, but these markets are, you know, intertwined with the financial markets, and so we'll we'll watch them both. Now, the next chart that I wanted to uh, post into uh, Tiger TV was the uh, euro chart on the daily basis, euro versus the U.S. dollar, because we're coming up to match the highs from January of 2013, up around this 136 uh, 136 level, and uh, you know we we've had no correction at all in this market. Uh, since early September, the most it could back off was 100 pips, which is basically, uh, you know, nothing in the currency market. So these markets are tremendously overbought, and they should be topping in this area, but they haven't turned down uh, as yet. The British pound has not was not able to make a new high today. Uh, the Japanese yen was not able to make a new low. So it's just basically the euro, but the euro is 53, you know, percent of the dollar index. And uh, that's the you know that's the one that everybody's watching, and that dollar index is uh, right at the 80 level, and that's the you know if it closes much below, uh, say 79.50, there's there's going to be a flight away from the dollar, and uh, why it would go into the euro would be a mystery to me, but you know just because money flows there doesn't mean it can't be a mystery. So if the market goes up, you know, it certainly uh, could go. Remember when we were back in July when the euro was 128, when we were making that uh, three drive to a bottom pattern, you know, the whole world said that, you know, the euro was going to go back to, uh, you know, 115. Well, from from one to, from 127 to, uh, you know, 136 is a, is a long run. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, situation to watch you know, as we go uh, go through these uh, markets. Now, I want to, I have to, uh, my hat's off uh, to one of our uh, DEN members, uh, Mr. Z. Uh, he sent me an email last night. Uh, actually, it was early in the early afternoon and uh, alerted me to the fact that gold had made a 61% uh, retracement, you know, on the daily charts. And uh, I wanted to, um, if you'll give me a second here, I wanted to, uh, 
Oh, I've already got it cleaned up. The question is, where did I put it? Give me one second here, and I will uh, get this up, and we'll uh, pull up this gold chart, and I've got to cascade these. Oh, dear. Hold on a second. Uh, boy, it's tough when you're Italian. You're trying to walk and chew gum at the same time. It gets to be a little diff. There's the one I want right here. This is it. This is just an incredible move. I always wonder, you know, when the market goes down $50 one day and then takes it all back the next day, I go back to look to see what's happening, you know, with that particular market. Now, I'm going to post the daily gold chart into the room, and you're going to see that yesterday's low was a perfect 61% retracement to the exact penny uh, from the low that we made back in July at the 1170 uh, per ounce, 1177, which was the 618 on the weekly chart. So this low that we hit yesterday is just incredibly important. And so we've got to be able to come in and say, okay, if that's the case, then what we've got to do is we have to say, well, this is probably going to be some type of a major bottom because we've rallied $40 in a matter of a few minutes. Now, $50 down, $40 up, you know, pretty soon you're back where you were the other day. But this type of volatility is what pattern recognition traders really absolutely love. We've had the same thing in crude oil. Uh, we've had the same thing in copper. Uh, we haven't had the same thing in soybeans yet, but you know, tomorrow on uh, tomorrow's show we're going to have Rich Anderson on, and I think we're over a major buying opportunity in soybeans. They're down right near the 61% retracement. Uh, they're trading very nicely after the negative report that we had uh, on Monday, and so it's going to be uh, real interesting to see if they can hold this uh, this uh, 12. Uh, excuse me, yeah, this 1260 area uh, in the soybeans. So we'll be watching those very closely tomorrow. But that'll be for tomorrow. But let's get back to, you know, what we're looking at here in the gold market. We hit the exact 61% uh, retracement. Now, silver, on the other hand, uh, did not make that uh, retracement. It, uh, it missed the 786 by just a heartbeat. And I'm going to put that one into, into Tiger TV because you'll see that it missed uh, the, uh, the bottom in the... Um, uh, silver, uh, the 786 retracement came in at um, at 20 uh, 2038, and f and f what we did is we came in and uh, we we were about 12 cents uh, above that level, so it missed the target by 12 cents, whereas was gold was spot on. I mean, it hit it right within one dollar of where it should have, and it had a good rally. And silver's had a a pretty strong rally. It's rallied about 50 cents off the bottom here. So there's a p potential for a really strong bottom here. Uh, in gold and in silver. In fact, in just about everything. I mean, I'll cover the commodities tomorrow, but it was such a wild day down, and then today having a wild day up tells me from a cycle standpoint that this is very important because if it was really bearish, those market would have continued down. They just wouldn't have broken for one day. So what, what amazes me more than anything else is that they all broke. I mean, that's really difficult. I mean, there was just one after another that was just getting hitting, hit badly. It started... Uh, you know, I guess with the grain report, I'm not sure, but you know, it went from the grains into the metals into the into the oil complex. So it's uh, it's really really amazing. And then to get take it all back today, in other words, all the losses from yesterday in some of those markets have been uh, you know already taken care of. And so that tells us that we're pretty close to you know something really really significant you know happening in these markets, which I think will uh, tell us that we are. Uh, at some type of an inflection point, whether it's going to be to the upside or the downside, I'm not sure. But all I know is that I circled the date of October the first, and uh, if the markets you know go below those lows, that tells me that we are going down, you know, for a long way to the downside as far as you know where I think some of these uh, markets are are going to go. Now, um, I wanted to take a, a quick look here at the bond market because I believe this is the one. Uh, if I had to do a, a trade of the year, and of course that was the one that we looked at last year, was uh, in the Treasury bond market. And we are in the midst of a, a really strong rally here. Uh, and I am uh, assuming that we're going to have the same type of rally that we had in um, March to May of last year. And I'm repeating this from, from what, what I did on Monday's show because this, I think, is really important. You know, we, we were very oversold in the interest rate markets. You know, rates had uh, gone up quite a bit, and now they're coming back. Uh, uh, rates are starting to uh, go down a bit, means bonds are, you know, rallying. And so we would think that we would get up into the uh, 137. We're trading around 133 
and three quarters right now in the Treasury bond. So another three or four points, and I believe we'll be at the 382 retracement of this whole down move. And I think that would be the best shorting opportunity that one's going to get, you know, uh, for the the rest of uh, 2014. Uh, the, the, the moves would be absolutely parallel and equal from uh, March through May and September through November. So right around, we've got a month to go. I think we've still got a month to go to get the market going higher. But if we take out that 127 level by any uh, degree at all, not more than just a few ticks, uh, that's going to tell us that the market's going to go a lot lower and interest rates are going to go uh, a great deal higher. So. This is uh, this is the main thing that I'm keeping an eye on for a longer term, uh, you know, uh, basis on these uh, on these bonds. I think they've got a just an absolute uh, tremendous opportunity, you know, to make uh, a great short sale if we can get them uh, about four points higher. That would be, you know, the ideal situation of uh, you know trying to hit these um, uh, get a good place to put these, you know, put the position on from the short side. That would really be really be uh, ideal I have to I have to show you the uh, the, uh, the the pattern in the in the crude oil folks because uh, it, it was really amazing we came down uh, let me let me blow it up a little bit so we can see it a little bit better we had a beautiful 1.618 expansion down here uh, yesterday uh, and then again on uh, uh, Sunday and then also again on uh, excuse me both on Monday and Tuesday we hit an exact 1.27 expansion down at the 101 level. And after that hit, that 101 level, uh, as you can see uh, from the chart that I put into Tiger TV, we made a move of almost $3 a barrel. That's $3,000 a contract in about a 28-hour period. That's how quickly, you know, the uh, Treasury bonds moved. And, uh, you know, they're, they're continuing to go higher. So it looks to me like we've got a major bottom also uh, in the uh, the crude oil market. We were looking for the bottom to come in somewhere around the 10, uh, 102 to 101 level, and it did come in at the uh, 101 level. And it made a double bottom there, which is uh, usually pretty nice, and then it made one more retracement. And then for that case, it just you know kept on running. I use the... Um, West Texas Intermediate Crude is what I use. I don't use the uh, Brent North Sea. I know a lot of people trade both, but I I don't know if you folks know this or not. But um, about there's about five firms that control about 60 percent of all the crude oil trading in the world. Uh, th uh, three of them are in Singapore. There's uh, one in New York, uh, one in uh, Denmark, I believe, and then there's one in London. Of those six people, ba five people basically take care of uh, almost all 60 percent of the trading open interest you know in the in the crude oil complex and that's really a, you know a quite a big amount here okay folks if you have any questions it's 877-927-6648 Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Larry, takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, we're back, and I've posted a, uh, the chart of JCPenney, the daily chart. I've had several requests today because I talked about this pattern uh, last Thursday when we had record volume of around 100 million. Unfortunately, on Friday, uh, Thursday night, they decided that they were going to dilute the stock by 35%, and so the volume on the following day was 10 times normal and the stock gap down. This is a, uh, a failed pattern, folks, uh, any way you look at it. Uh, the buy was around nine dollars and a quarter. The stop would have been uh, right around nine dollars. Excuse me, eight dollars and seventy-five cents. That would have been a half a dollar loss, around five percent uh, in the price uh, overall price of J.C. Penney. And uh, this this uh, this stock has uh, real serious problems. And and if you stop and think what the management did, folks, they they diluted stockholder equity. They could have very easily gone. At least I think they could have gone in very easily into the junk bond market, especially what they're using. You know, the underwriter is going to be. Uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, and they have you know far-reaching tentacles. I'm sure they could raise 800 million dollars like it was nothing, but um, they decided to dilute uh, shareholder equity, and that's what happened. And now the stock is uh, you know gapping down, and uh, the volume is of course dried up because you can't keep doing 10 times normal uh, very often. But uh, the only way I would be interested in this stock now would be to see uh, J.C. Moore, J.C. Penny you know rally a little bit, maybe go up to 11 or 12. And then maybe buy it on a little pullback. That's what I would really be, uh, really be looking at. But I would have 
thought that they would have been able to go into the junk bond market and uh, you know get the uh, the financing that they need, but evidently that's not the case. Those people in uh, Wall Street are you know you can't accuse them of being stupid. They they're always worried about their own self interest, uh, of course, but uh, they're certainly uh, they're very very smart people. So evidently one of the options was not to go into the junk bond market. So they, the only way they could raise it was to go in to, uh, you know, to get the money through there. They didn't go to Mr. Buffett, or maybe they did, uh, and, you know, he turned them down. I know during 2008, Goldman Sachs went to to Mr. Buffett, as you, if you saw the movie, uh, Too Big to Fail. You know, you saw that that segment in there is when Goldman Sachs approached uh, Mr. Buffett to, you know, borrow the $4 billion, I guess it was. And Mr. Buffett uh, actually took his, uh, I think it was $2 billion profit, uh, yesterday, that's when he converted his stock options that he had in um, Goldman Sachs, uh, along with his, I think he was getting some ridiculous number, like 10% interest on the bonds uh, that he'd had, and it was just really a, an amazing investment for him. But you remember, when he was doing it, there was blood in the streets. Not everybody <laughs> wanted to be buying stuff at that particular time. We're going to have another one of those times, uh, probably down the road a little bit, but... Um, We'll have to wait and see, you know, when that's going to occur. It'll take a little bit of time for it to uh, evolve. Another question someone asked me is, how do I uh, determine what I want to risk when I do something like this in J.C. Penny? I, I bought some J.C. Penny for my grandson, my new little grandson, and um, not a lot, a couple thousand shares, you know, just a few thousand dollars. But I'm only going to risk about, uh, you know, five percent of that. So. Uh, you know, basically what happened is when I lost, uh, you know, the, the stock went below half a dollar from what I paid for it, especially after it gapped down, you know, I, that was it. You know, the pattern was no longer valid to me because all the numbers were there. And then with the news being real bad, which is it's supposed to be because the market's coming down really quickly, that doesn't make any difference to me because I don't understand the news and nobody else does either. All I know is that the price of the stock goes below what I want to risk. I'm out of there. Because that's the only control I have in the market, folks. I mean, I don't have any privy to inside information or anything like that. All I can do is look at the bar charts, and if they tell me it's a time to buy, I buy. If they tell me it's a time to sell, I sell. I put my orders in and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. That's uh, that's how I look at it. You know, might be right, might be wrong, but, you know, that's the bottom line of what I'm doing. So the J.C. Penny trade is finished. It's done. It's a loss. Uh, unfortunately, it was a loss. Some of them, some of them win, of course, but uh, this one was a relatively small loss, you know, given the fact that it was in the news. And with that kind of volume, uh, the loss could have been, uh, you know, far, far greater than, uh, you know, what we even, uh, what we could have even suspected. So we'll have to uh, let history tell us what's going to happen, you know, with J.C. Penny down the road. But, but frankly, I'm out of it. Doesn't make any difference to me anymore. And I'll, I'll follow it a little bit just to see if it gets above 11, and we'll we'll have an idea of you know where we stand at that point. But uh, that's a long way down the road. The thing that's on my focus uh, right now is the um, the markets in the uh, foreign exchange because that's where the money's moving, and that's really going to have some fireworks there, folks. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stock price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are you ready to ride the next bull market wave? Catch the Chapman Wave. Using the Chapman Wave methodology, Basil's very comprehensive daily newsletter, The Opening Call, gives the short, intermediate, and long-term analysis for the key indexes. In his Trader's Corner, he gives a brief market summary and expectation for the day with possible trades, both long and short, which are reviewed daily. A position, subscribers sold recently for plus 42% on parts and plus 64% on rest. Had Hertz Global as a core position for six months. A current position, entered as a turnaround company, is trading over 100% of its entry point as a portion sold earlier for a plus 21% gain. Subscribers to the opening call see the Chapman Wave techniques demonstrated and explained daily to also educate investors. Now you can get a free two-week trial. Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com. BI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and we have a question from uh, one of our listeners. Uh, the question that they asked was, which would be a better short here? You know, we're looking in, in the currencies, but we're looking at the euro and the pound uh, and the yen. Which would be the best, uh, the best short to look at? Well, I think there's two, well, there's three that I'm looking at. That's the yen, the euro, and the uh, British pound. But the British pound was unable to make new highs um, yet today. I mean, we've done that in the in the British pound, and we've, you know, we went up to a 1.27 expansion of last week's range up at the 136.10 level, and I felt that 136 is going to be a very interesting spot uh, to look at because those are the highs that we made in January of last year before the market uh, you know dropped about 25 percent so my answer to that question would be I would pick the pound because it is uh, it has not made new highs uh, on the day as yet uh, and if you if you want to you know be short the pound if you get much above the uh, 164 level we would certainly be wrong and that would be uh, you know it'd be a amazing well not a, no being wrong is not amazing being wrong it happens all the time but what's amazing is is that when the market was making a bottom down at the 148 level in the pound making a beautiful gartley down there the nobody in the world wanted it and now you know it's up here around 163 and the whole world uh, you know wants it so usually you want to go the opposite direction of what uh, most people are doing now I, I did put the chart of the VIX index into the room because uh, here again we're showing a situation where the market is just not looking uh, very afraid of anything. I know we were looming here with the government uh, not working 
And, uh, you know, it's really amazing. I have a, a daughter that's a doctor, and she works for the Veterans Administration, and she's on furlough. And she called me yesterday, and she was rather upset. She says, Dad, after 14 years of, of school, she said, I'm on furlough. What, what kind of economy do we live in? And I said, well, honey, this happened, you know, 15 years ago. And I said, everything will probably work out okay. But she was very upset after all those years of education that uh, she was actually uh, out of a job. And so she hopped on a plane to go visit her sister in California. Well, I said, take a vacation. What else can you do? Uh, the next chart that I wanted to put into Tiger TV uh, describes a little bit of what um, Basil was talking about on his show, and that is the, the strength in the NASDAQ. I mean, it's just been a, an incredible market. It's just kept going up and up and up, and with very little correction. And uh, it's been a you know a big move. I, I used a 60-minute chart because uh, it's uh, easier uh, it's easier to see because I'm looking at the the swing so that you don't have to risk an arm and a leg when you decide to put on a long or a short. And that's why I use the hourly charts uh, on some of these occasions. You know when I put them into Tiger TV, the daily show up quite nice, but. Uh, I think this particular instance, you know, the uh, the chart on the daily, on the excuse me, on the 60 minute, you know, looks uh, looks much better. So um, the the market still has uh, has legs, folks. That's all I can tell you. you know, we've had a correction, you know, down from when the FOMC worked. That was when the S and P was around 17.26. We came down to uh, 17.70. You know, we dropped a little over 50 S and P points. So we're having a little bit of a pullback, uh, you know, rally back after the lows today. But uh, you know, we made a pretty nice bottom today based on the you know half hour charts. And so it's going to be interesting to see what the rally is uh, is going to happen here. The real fireworks, uh, from my point of view, is happening in the forex market with these moves that we've had in the euro and the pound, and the yen. Because the yen is coming into really strong uh, support around this 97 level in the yen. Right now we're at around 97.30. So between 97 and 96.50 in the yen versus the dollar, that's going to be very very important for that to hold, which would be the equivalent to the, the Nikkei stock market holding because there's about a 90% correlation between the Japanese yen and the Nikkei Dow. If the Nikkei Dow goes up, the currency goes up. If the, Dow dro if the Nikkei Dow drops, the, the yen dollar drops. So it's very high correlation. That would be indicative that there's a bottom coming uh, in the Nikkei Dow, which could equate or not equate to ours because they're totally different markets, folks. Uh, the Japanese market topped in uh, December of 1989 and went down for 20 some years. And, uh, you know, we were. We We kept going higher, so you can't use a correlation between Japan and the United States. They're totally different uh, markets, economies, uh, demographics, uh, everything. If you start trying to do that, you'll you'll get into uh, a great deal of trouble uh, in your uh, investment uh, philosophy. That's the that's you know the you know the bottom line of you know what we're watching when we're when we're looking at some of these things. Um, a person asked me about. Um, the uh, the crop report. We're going to cover the crop report tomorrow's show because uh, I'm going to have Rich Anderson on because this was a very a significant crop report. It pushed the price of things down uh, quite a bit, and now we're we're looking at a market that is uh, got a chance to have some type of a pretty significant bottom. We'll, we'll be discussing that tomorrow, uh, along with sugar, because you know we looked at sugar. And that was also, uh, you know, a pretty good move, and we'll we'll take a look at it. I think the best way to trade stocks right now is just to, uh, you know, to to wait and see if these patterns are are going to hold. You know, if you just just look at them there. You don't have to be a rocket science or a fund or a fundamentalist to figure out what's going to happen. I mean, the, the patterns that I've been seeing in the S and P futures and the Dow Jones futures have been very indicative of really really nice trading opportunities. You know, it was making an expansion in the S&P up around the, the 1720 area, and now, you know, it's pulled back to 1670, you know, 50-some points lower, and it's making a beautiful retracement, exactly the 61% retracement of a previous low. That's what you look for in, uh, in pattern recognition. I, at least that's what I think you should look for. I would like to uh, bring out, uh, since we were talking about the currencies, I wanted to uh, and this is one of the major ones because it's the yen, and that's one that people uh, trade a lot just because of the cross-rate spreads where they 
and the carry trade, which is pretty much history anymore. But we'll take a look at it here if I can get this thing to work. There we go. We almost have it ready. And you'll be able to see the, um, the this will be an hourly chart on the Japanese yen. Remember, this is, the I think, about the fourth largest uh, economy uh, in the world. And you can see uh, down at the 97 level, uh, we're completing a big A, B equals C, D, Gartley. And uh, it's it's spot on because you have five numbers coming there at the same time. You have the ABCD leg from the middle of September. Uh, you have the two other ABCD legs that have happened over the last three weeks, all measuring to the 9700 level. And that happens to be uh, exactly 786 of the low we made in the first week of August, which was on the uh, the new moon. So... This is going to be a real interesting, um, real interesting pattern coming together here uh, in the you know the dollar versus the yen. It's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be really something uh, quite nice to watch if it does unfold like we think it's going to. So that's why I'm looking at of the three that we talked about: the pound, the yen, and the euro. Uh, the yen is, I think, the best because it's still in an uptrend where the other twos are. You know, they're really running uh, to the upside, so you're going to have to be very careful because you sell a runaway market. You have to be able to, uh, you know, put your stops in. That's why, you know, we don't risk more than 40 pips at the most, you know, when we're dealing with foreign currency because uh, the, the volatility and the liquidity in those markets, you know, it can take just about anything. Even today when, when the uh, European bank came out and made the euro jump quite a bit, it was very, very logical trading all the way up. It was just... Uh, a really nice, uh, a real nice situation from a trading point. That uh, and and the euro uh, was was absolutely incredible. I think I should show you this uh, on the hourly chart because it was just really, uh, really amazing. Uh, it was uh, no, excuse me, it was a half hour chart. Give me a second here, and you'll see the uh, the pattern that's happened. We've had a beautiful three drive pattern form now, and uh, whether this is going to be the top or not. I don't know, but it, it just had everything going for it uh, at the bottom today when it was around the 135 level. It uh, really is, uh, you know, turned out to be a really nice trade. And we did go up and make a three drive to a top pattern today. Uh, it's perfectly symmetrical. In other words, drive two was exactly 1.27 from drive one, and drive three was 1.27 of, uh, of drive two. That's the one, two, three. Uh, uh, Three, uh, three drive to a top pattern, and if that's the case, we should get a correction uh, at least down to the 135 level where we started today. So that's going to be a another interesting, you know, situation that'll be unfolding here uh, over the next few days. If this is the top, now as far as the the cycle part, this is uh, October 2nd uh, is a very, very important day in uh, in history of the stock market. Uh, a lot of you folks. I uh, won't remember this, but on October the 2nd, 1987, uh, we had a Venus-Uranus aspect. That's where you have the uh, Venus was conjunct Uranus. At, they were at zero degrees, and that's the, the Fibonacci cycle, because if you divide the number of days that takes Venus to go around the sun versus, uh, around, excuse me, around the Earth versus uh, Uranus, uh, that comes out to 0.618 of a year. It's 255 days. And so uh, if you take that cycle... Uh, on October 2nd, 1987, uh, and then look at it uh, 17 days later on October 19th, 1987, the stock market had given up 40% of its value in in a matter of uh, uh, of about three weeks. And uh, that was probably the best put-buying uh, opportunity that I've ever seen in my lifetime. The problem is, is that when the market opened lower on the 19th of October, all this volume dried up. And even though you had puts that were huge into the money, that you couldn't get, there was no market to being made in it. And so it wasn't for like two or three days later that the market makers, either they were coming back from shock or whatever it was, that you were able to take your profits in something. I mean, it, it was very frustrating because I happened to have, I had a few, I had a lot of them on, on the 16th of October, but they expired uh, on, you know, the, on the 16th, and then you had Saturday and Sunday. Uh, which was 17, 18, and on the 19th, you know, the market opened you know, sharply lower. Had I had November puts instead of October puts, I would have been able to, you know, make a, uh, not just a small fortune, it would have been quite a bit. But I was happy. You know, on the October 16th, the market closed down 100 and some points in the Dow, and it was trading around 2,600, so that was quite a bit. However, let's go back to this key date. 
on October the 2nd. So this date that's coming in right now, it was uh, 26 years ago. And uh, so we're going to see if this has any effect on it or not. We have a lot of transit cycles that starting today go all the way to the 8th with the culmination of the 8th of October as being something, you know, pretty significant. So we're going to be watching that with a, uh, you know, with an evil eye here because uh, October 8th is going to be a real, real key level, you know, to watch, uh, you know, for stocks. That's the way it looks like uh, from the cyclical standpoint. So this is what we're watching in the uh, uh, the euro and also in the stock market. October 8th is something, you know, pretty significant from a uh, cycle point of view. Uh, a, a listener just asked a question, um, what about the gold market? What, how, how will I react to the gold market? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I think that gold has made a, a pretty significant bottom here because of the fact that we've rallied, you know, $50 an ounce in a matter of uh, less than 24 hours. It's been 12 hours since we had this rally. And, you know, we came off of a perfect 61% retracement on the long-term weekly charts and so that's telling us that this thing has a chance. It might have legs here, and we might be able to get to the point where it has a pretty good, uh, pretty good move. Now, there's something else that you have to consider, folks. We've had tremendous volatility uh, in the commodity markets, gold, silver, copper, crude oil, soybeans, wheat, corn. Now, that, that could also transpose over into the foreign exchange markets. Those markets are totally different. But the volatility can still come into those markets, and that's where the real uh, real history of uh, of trading would be made. Because if you get that type of volatility in the in the forex markets, you're going to be looking at something very very dramatic. Forex markets usually trend for a long time; they don't have a key reversal type days. Uh, they do occur, but not very often. And uh, I'm watching for a potential in that only because it's happened in the commodity market. So I look to see, okay, if they're moving money in the commodity markets, you know, where do they move most of the money? Well, that's in the Forex market. So then I go to the Forex market and say, okay, what would be the probability, given the cycles and the patterns that we're looking at, that you could be looking at a reversal over this time frame? Well, I look at the five-point reverse wave pattern that we have in the British pound. I look at the five-point reverse wave pattern that we have in the euro. And I look at the uh, lower top pattern that we have in the Japanese yen, and that there is better than 65% of the uh, U.S. dollar index, which is you know trading in around uh, um, you know around around 80. I think it might have broken 80 for a little bit today, but the 80 is still rather rather important. So these are the things that I'm watching uh, on a uh, from a forex standpoint to see if these uh, if these patterns do you know, come in and and start to move the way that I think they can do. In other words, to repeat what we had happen in the uh, in the market for uh, the commodity markets. Because, boy, that was wild yesterday, folks. I, I was fortunate. I had a little bit on the short side of the gold market and the crude oil market. But, frankly, uh, I, you know, I, I got out way too early because I don't expect to take the last part of the move. But uh, when it started to rally uh, this morning, uh, or excuse me, it was late yesterday afternoon, around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon is when the uh, the real rally started in gold. It opened about $10 lower uh, down around the uh, 13, uh, 80, uh, 12.87 layer, and then it just took off. Okay, we've got to take a little break here, 877-927-6648. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this power Powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting tfnn.com. 
Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're, uh, I posted into Tiger TV the chart of the New York Stock Exchange Index, and I just wanted you to take a look at it because it's a very bullish chart. This last retracement... Uh, that we had came in at the 50% uh, retracement uh, of the last move, uh, so it's held up uh, incredibly well. So it's really hard to um, to be bearish stocks when they hold us. Now, if they get back below that, then that's a totally different thing. But uh, all of the markets that that I'm looking at, you know, especially the Nasdaq and the Russell, they all look very bullish. I mean, you can't really fade it. It looks like it was uh, in 19. Uh, 99 and 2000, you know, the 99 and 2000 market went up during January, February, and March, pulled up by the NASDAQ. But then when the NASDAQ topped in March of 2000, then the market started down. The Dow and S&P didn't go anywhere during that time, but the other markets uh, certainly did. So you can't stand in front of it and, uh, you know, run into something that's going to, uh, you know, cause you a great deal of pain fighting it. Now, I wanted to post in. Uh, to the uh, Tiger TV, the, the chart of the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, because you know, being a component of the Dow and part of the Dow theory, 
uh, on this last correction that we had, the seven-day correction from uh, right after the Fed day on the 19th uh, of October of September, which was the the full moon, we came down uh, two days ago. We stopped exactly at a 382 retracement around 6,500 in the Dow Jones transportation, and and yesterday we took 61 percent of that back very very quickly. So that's telling us also that the market still has a positive bias. And so the, you know, the market still looks like it's got legs, and so there's no reason to uh, you know, stand in front of it. Uh, a listener has asked me a question you know, about a potential crash. Folks, don't, don't focus on a potential crash. They happen once every, once every half generation. That's a 25, 30 years. If you want to wait for something like that, then uh, it, you know more power to you. But just trade the 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 things. That you, trade what you see, not what you believe. But trying to trade a, a crash is very difficult. Now, when when a crash scenario comes up, you might have to, that particular uh, you know thing happening. But you know that doesn't that doesn't occur very often. And we have one of those coming up on October eighth. Whether that's going to mean anything or not, I have to wait to see what the patterns are doing at that time. If they're all coming together, and the market's making a new high at that time. Then I'll say yes, given the cycles and the fact that the risk is small here, this is what we'd be looking at as potential, you know, for the market to uh, move to the uh, to the downside. But that's not occurring right now. There's no even no re uh, any reason to even think about it. So there's not a problem. The Dow Jones Utility Index has also, uh, even though it's been hit badly over the uh, over the years, it still has uh, came back pretty well. And it, it held the uh, 786 retracement of this last rally. We've had a bunch of, uh, you know, lower highs in the utilities, so that has been negative. But frankly, uh, you know, today's low was a 61% retracement, you know, of the previous low. So both the Dow utilities and the Dow transportations and the Dow Jones, you know, they don't look that bearish. And I, uh, you know, it's you know, it's hard to be bullish up in here because the, the things have gone so far. But uh, that doesn't show any signs uh, that it's ready to, you know, to go to the downside. And I use the Bradley model a lot, and the Bradley model has not been helping us very much, folks. Uh, you know, it said it was going to top in May, and even though the New York Stock Exchange Index is pretty much exactly where it was in May, you know, the NASDAQ has gone up, the Russell has gone up, and the Dow Jones and S&P have gone up. So that model is not working right now. So you go back to what the patterns are doing. And just just follow those, but don't don't spend any time, you know, worrying about a crash. Uh, that's basically the bottom line. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, folks, and may God bless. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of Mastering Probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.